Welcome to the Corporate Treasury 101 podcast. Today we'll be concluding this series on working capital management. In the previous episodes of the series, we talked about what a balance sheet is, what are assets and liabilities, as well as current assets and current liabilities, and the cash conversion cycle. Today, Guillaume will be taking us through how companies manage and optimize their working capital management. Therefore, in this episode, expect to learn what is the optimal ratio between your current assets and current liabilities, why you don't want that ratio to be too high, how short-term financing can help you manage your working capital, and even a little touch on how factoring plays into all of this. Following the normal flow of our mini-series, next week you will get the full-blown episode in one shot. If you enjoy the episode and the podcast as a whole, why not share it with a friend? I'm sure they'd love to learn more about the amazing world of corporate treasury, just like you do. And don't forget to download your free copy of the Fundamentals of Corporate Treasury at corporatetreasury101.com. The reviews for the ebook have been amazing, so please do get your copy, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And let us know on Instagram at corporatetreasury101. And with that, on with the episode. So, working capital or net working capital simply is the difference between your current assets and current liabilities. As you just mentioned it, uh, you want it to be positive and this can be linked to the shareholder equity. And it's often used to assess of the short term. Can be seen as healthy right and it can be seen as financially uh, efficient because you turn mm. resources into more resources after all yeah at the end of the day you want to be in profit right because if you're if you're the other way around and you're you owe people more than you have that doesn't that doesn't sound healthy for anyone right that it's not a good business model let's say yeah. <laughs> um that that's i mean you could lead to bankruptcy right you always explain to me that bankruptcy is when you cannot pay your debts so insolvency yes yeah insolvency is when um it doesn't mean you do not have the money at a certain point in time it's just you don't have it when you need to repay your short-term mm. debt for instance and that can lead to bankruptcy yes um and it's also a good way to assess the short-term health of a company because it can be seen as an important measure of the operational efficiency. If a company has a very positive net working capital, it means that its cash flows can be very positively impacted. But I mean, this all depends on, like we were saying earlier, right? Like, depends on the cycles of your industry. So if you're operating in like 30-day, 60-day, 90-day payment mm -hmm. cycles, um, some industries is probably easier to get the cash in to pay the cash that you need to 100%. pay and other ones, maybe you've got longer lead times, right? So if you're making, for example, if you're making ships, mm -hmm. right, to build a ship so that you can sell it so that you can uh, actually get cash in, it takes years, yeah. right? Yeah. But buying all the individual pieces of that ship, you can get them obviously quicker than you can sell ships 100%. right you can buy the wood you can buy the metal and you need to pay those people before you can actually sell your ship yeah 100 right? whereas if you're in like if you're a supermarket if you're a cafe mm -hmm. you're gonna buy coffee bean uh, you're gonna buy milk like 20 more than 20 you're gonna buy like 50 cartons of milk every day but you're also gonna sell you know 200 coffees a day so your turnaround of when you can convert your raw materials into something you can sell and get cash in yeah. is much quicker. This right? is again very spot on, Sam. So it's all about how you manage your working capital management. And the whole thing is, if you're in an industry where indeed you need to pay pieces, parts of your ship, for instance, before you sell it, well, it's, how you are, it's all about how you manage your debts, how you finance your different raw materials and processes and until the time you get the ship done and that you can sell it. Um, so how, how does one manage? Well, what's, what does managing mean? Properly so, managing your working capital? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. So the easy answer is you optimize the use of your current assets and liabilities and monitor them through the year. But uh, we would like to get a little bit more in detail. So typically, you can make sure to negotiate a favorable payment terms with your suppliers as much as possible and vice versa with your clients. But there are indeed cases where you cannot do that.
because you might not have that much negotiating power, right? Yeah. Like if I'm a little cafe and I'm going to some big milk um, distributor that serves hundreds of yeah. cafes in the area, um, I'm just one little cafe, right? They're more, I need more from them than yes. they need from so me. So it's indeed not always easy, um, especially when you deal as a small business with big, big corporations until you grow your business enough and you become Hussam's Cafe Corporation throughout the world and has a massive negotiation power. But let's say at the beginning, it's a bit harder. So another important metric is how well you do manage your inventory. Because the more goods you have in stock, for instance, the more money you spend and all you will have to pay in the near future. So how flexible can you be on your stock, for instance? That's a first uh, possibility. But you want to be... Um... You want to have as little stock as possible, right? Yes, that, absolutely. That's, that's, isn't that what everyone wants? Isn't that just the standard? So it's the standards, but some people manage it, manage it way better than others. For instance, mm. you will have some businesses that prefer to play it safe and have a lot of stock not to miss any sales because that's all about the ratio you have of not missing a sales because you don't have stock enough on the spot and having too much stock, so you do not miss any sale, of course. But on the other hand, you lose money on the stock. So it's all about finding that sweet spot, thanks to predictions, thanks to experience, like same moments, same year, uh, same part of the month, and so on. So yeah, everybody wants this, but it's not that easy to manage. Okay, so what, then what can you do if, if you can't manage your stock to be as minimum as possible? What are the other options for business? Yeah, so the ultimate objective of working capital management is to maintain sufficient cash flow to meet your short-term debt operating costs and short-term debt obligations. The first thing you need to look at is the current ratio. This is calculated by dividing the current assets by the current liability. A ratio below one means you may have uh, issues paying your short-term obligation, obviously. And a ratio of 1.2 to 2 is desirable. So that's something you want Wait, to aim at. Why would you want to cap it at two? Surely you want to go as just high as you can, no? So that would make sense. Um, but you want to cap it at two because then you are not optimizing you, the use of your cash. You could be earning more money or invest it into new projects because you your business is making so much positive cash flows. And at some point, if you have too much on your hands, you're not optimizing it. You're not investing it in another project. You're not investing it even in a short-term investment um, option. So that's something you don't want to go above. So, and also just means that you're owed a lot of money, but you don't have any in your pocket, right? Which is like... What do you no? mean? You, you owe a lot of money or you're owed? You're, you're owed. You're owed a lot of money. So a lot of people are saying, yeah, we need to pay you. But you're just yeah. not very good at collecting your debts. Right? And so if, you, if your ratio is above two, you collect yeah. it. You have the money. But a current asset is yeah. money that you will get within 12 months. Yeah, indeed. Right? So a ratio of your current assets versus your current liabilities is more people owe you within 12 months than you need to pay someone within 12 months. Exactly. Uh, but it also includes cash itself. Okay, fair. And you can convert it. That. Like if you yes. can get money and you get you get more than this ratio of two, then you can transform it into other current liabilities or like longer liabilities. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you invest your cash properly. If your cash conversion cycle doesn't allow you to be above one, then you can leverage financial instruments, for instance, in order to ensure a good liquidity. And that's the whole answer to your point earlier about the industries where it's really hard to be above one anyways. Then you need to leverage financial instruments. Financial instruments like overdrafts, right? We talked about them in our short-term financing um, episodes, I think. Yeah, precisely. So overdraft is a financial instrument you can leverage. Ideally, you really do not want to be below one. But if that's the case, there are some short-term solutions out there, including the overdraft. So the first one is indeed what we would call a working capital credit line. So it's a flexible loan that can be used and repaid with quite some flexibility, actually, and it's cheaper than the overdraft. When a treasurer sees that the liquidity might not be sufficient to comply with financial obligation, he or she can tap into a working capital credit line and repay it later when clients will have paid, for instance. Is that different to like supply chain financing? 
Is that same, one of those assets so as well? One of those tools? It would be part of it. It's something a bit different uh, because here you really focus on one aspect of the company, the supply chain, but it's quite linked because indeed you need to finance your overall operations and this is part of it. Mm -hmm. That's where we, you know, you have a payment term of 30 days, but you go to a middleman to pay you immediately and they take the payment from the, yes. from the person that owed you money. So you get the money now. Factoring, and, factoring that's indeed, indeed. and that's indeed one of the possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. What other, what other tools are there? I have an overdraft in my bank account. That would work now. That would work. It's rather <laughs> expensive, but permits some flexibility. Um, and you typically receive the authorization from your bank to go negative on your bank account. So spot on, and you have one on your bank account as well. So you have some facilities to manage your working capital management, Hussam. See? Corporate treasury is everywhere. Um, <laughs> and you mentioned it. So supply chain finance and factoring are not per se exactly the same thing, but the mechanism you described was factoring. And yes, that's spot on. It's another possibility. It's rather expensive, but it can be a very viable option. Okay, fair enough. But I mean, it's very risky, right? If the it's factoring, I mean, if the customer doesn't pay, then the mm -hmm. bank doesn't get paid in the middle either, right? So that, who, how does yeah, that risk get managed? Uh, that's a very interesting one. So it's a risk. And this is why factoring is rather expensive. So banks or the institutions, financial institutions that propose this service, um, bills quite a lot for it. Typically, the price ranges between 1% and 5% of the cash advance. And so for 30 days, that's quite a lot, to which the service provider often add an additional fee, of course. Ultimately, the risk sits always at the company getting the cash advance because they commit to repay the factoring company in case their customers fail on paying the invoice. So if the customer doesn't repay, then the bank will come to you anyways. And take all the money back that you might have already spent. <laughs> of course, definitely. But five percent is a lot. That's a, that's a big chunk of the. It's a lot um, of the, what you're owed, but yeah. makes sense. Thank you, Guillaume. I feel like that makes a lot more sense now. Thank you, Sam.